you can start experimenting with Dimension right away by using the free starter assets that ship with the application. There are four asset types Dimension uses, models, materials, lights, and images. Models represent 3D forms and shapes. They have dimensionality and can be anything from a simple product like a bottle to a house. Models can even be made of groups of items that form a unique asset. Materials define the look of a model by changing the way its surface appears and can be edited to create custom looks. Images can be applied directly to the surface of a model. The final content type for Dimension is Lights. Lighting changes reflections, highlights, shadows, and the overall brightness, contrast, and color of your scene. In addition to the starter assets that Dimension ships with, you can import your own custom content in many formats. You can jumpstart your project with Adobe Stock, which has 3D content that has been curated and optimized for use in Dimension. You can search Adobe Stock directly in the app by switching from the Starter Assets panel to the CC Libraries panel. Set the search mode to Search Stock, then enter a search term. Adjust your filters for the type of asset you're looking for. Click on an asset to license it and add it to your CC library so you can access it at any time. We hope this video has been helpful in getting a sense of what types of content you'll use in Dimension and where you can find content to get started. We'll look at one of the fundamentals of 3D, moving objects to create a layout. An important thing to know about working in 3D is that objects are positioned just like in the real world. They have horizontal, vertical, and depth positioning, represented by X, Y, and Z coordinates. What is in front or in back is all relative to the view of the camera. Each dimension document is one scene, or one virtual world, where you can lay out objects. Use the Scene panel to quickly view all of the objects in your scene. You can select objects by clicking on them in the Scene panel or in the canvas. Some objects are made of multiple parts. When selected, objects in the Scene panel will auto-expand to show subparts. To move an object, you can use the Transform tools, which includes the Select, Move, Scale, and Rotate tools found at the top of the toolbar. Let's start with the Select tool. The Select tool is the primary tool for arranging objects. You can activate it with the default shortcut V. Once the tool is active, select an object in the Canvas or Scene panel. The Select tool widget will appear. Use the Pivot handle to move the object along a surface, easily snapping to the ground plane or other objects. Hold Command while dragging on the pivot handle to move the object in screen space. This will always move your object parallel to your current camera view. Click and drag on the object, not using the widget, to move the object parallel to the ground plane. The other handles represent Move, Rotate, and Scale in all three axes. Green for Y, Red for X, and Blue for Z. Use the arrow handles to move the object in each axis. Use the circle handles to rotate the object around each axis. And use the square handles to scale the object in each axis. You can also hold shift to scale uniformly. You can change the orientation of the gizmo to be aligned with either the object or the scene by toggling the Align to Scene tool option. The shortcut to change the gizmo alignment is Q. This lets you move the object in many ways very quickly. It's important to note that the property panel will always display the position of an object in scene space, or aligned to the scene. The scene axis widget in the corner of the canvas can help you keep oriented between the properties panel and the scene. We hope this video has been helpful in showing how you can move objects around to create unique 3D layouts. We can't wait to see what you make.
we'll look at one of the fundamentals of 3D, navigating around the scene to look at it from any angle. In 3D, you control your view into the world through the use of a virtual camera. The camera is controlled through three basic camera movements, each tied to a tool on the toolbar. Click on a tool to activate it, then click and drag in the canvas to use the tool. The Orbit tool lets you arc your camera around, rotating your viewing angle. The Pan tool lets you move your camera along the view plane, up, down, left, and right. The Dolly tool lets you move your camera forward and backward. The default shortcuts for these tools are the number keys for 1 for Orbit, 2 for Pan, and 3 for Dolly. For a mouse, use the right button to orbit, middle mouse button to pan, and scroll wheel to dolly. You can also frame the camera, automatically moving it so that any selected object is in view. Select an object you want to view. Press the frame action button to frame your camera. The default keyboard shortcut for framing is the F key. Camera edits are stored in a separate camera history than scene edits. Select Camera Undo to move back through camera changes. Select Camera Redo to move forward through camera changes. You can save camera views and easily return to them later. Open the Camera Bookmarks panel. Click the plus button to save the current view. Click on any saved view to return to that bookmark. In addition to these navigation controls, there are some additional properties on the camera that can be used for compositional changes. First, go to the Scene panel. Select the Camera Object. Here you'll see the camera's transformation properties. You can use these to input precise viewing angles. These properties are also controlled directly by the camera tools. You can adjust the field of view to get different perspective effects. For example, reducing the field of view to be very low and then framing an object will give you an isometric effect. Another useful composition property is focus, which creates a depth of field effect. Once enabled, Dimension will auto-focus the closest item to the camera. You can update the focus area by selecting the Set Focus Action. Once the action is enabled, click on any other surface in the scene to set it as the focus point. Adjust the Blur property to change the strength of the focus effect. We hope this video has been helpful in understanding how the camera can help you explore 3D. We can't wait to see what you make. We'll start looking at how you can customize the appearance of a model using materials. Many models will come with their own materials. When importing an asset, Dimension will look for associated material information and import the material at the same time. These materials are usually made for a particular model and can't be reused easily on other models. There are also materials that are standalone and can be used on any model, like plastic, wood, glass, water, and much more. To apply a material, simply drag and drop it into the canvas or scene panel, targeting whichever object you want to apply it to. If you don't have any selected assets, the material will be applied to the targeted object beneath your cursor. If you have a selection, then the material will be applied to all selected objects. You can use the Sampler tool to quickly sample and reuse materials through your scene. Activate the Sampler tool with the default shortcut key I. Click in the canvas to sample a material from an object. Hold the Alt button to change the tool to Apply mode. Click in the canvas to apply the material to another object. When a material is applied to multiple objects at the same time, or applied from the sampler tool, a linked material is created. 
Editing a linked material will edit its appearance everywhere in the scene. You can break this connection using the Unlink Material action, which will separate the material for the selected object and allow it to be edited independently. If you want to apply a material to part of a model, you can use the Magic Wand tool. Activate the Magic Wand tool with the default shortcut key W. Set the tool options whether you want a small, medium, or large selection. Click in the canvas on the part of the model you want to select. Once the selection is active, you can apply a new material using drag and drop or the sampler tool to create a material region.